Hey, Tully's Training, Kyle Kittleson here with Callie the Lab. Hey, Callie. Good girl. You stay right there. Now, Callie is a yellow Labrador. Um, I already know I'll get questions on, is she a white lab? Is she a yellow lab? She's a, she's a yellow lab, but she's just very white. That's just how she is. Um, anyway, today I'm talking to you guys uh, who are out there who have retrievers, who have labs. You just stay right there. You just stay. She's looking to go get one of her toys because I start talking and she starts getting excited like we're going to play. Um, and as someone who is a dad to a lab, I have some very uh, hopefully helpful uh, tips for you guys to keep your dogs healthy and also to keep you sane. Because a dog that is well fed, uh, meaning fed health, healthy food, not necessarily fed a lot, just had uh, fed the correct amount of healthy food and also gets the right amount of exercise and mental stimulation is a dog that has way less behavioral problems and a way better relationship with their owners. Um, so, Kelly, Kelly, did you just leave? Get up here. Come on. Kelly, up here. Let's go. She just wants to, she's looking at me with her toy right now. Kelly, up here. Good girl. All right, now you sit. Great. All right, now you stay there. Um, so the first thing I want to talk to you about is if your dog has some of those natural tendencies that retrievers in labs lab have, like fetching, utilize that. Most dogs are not getting enough exercise. And the dogs who do get exercise aren't getting enough where you're seeing a change in their behavior, meaning the, they've decreased in their problem behaviors and uh, they've increased in the behaviors that you find desirable. Because a dog who gets enough exercise is going to be less likely to chew up the pillows or bark or jump and expend any extra energy because they're getting the adequate amount of exercise. Um, so if your dog does something that it's naturally wanting to do like fetch, utilize that. Callie uh, loves to fetch. It's, it's her favorite thing. Would you say it's your favorite thing, fetching a ball or a stick or something? <laughs> She's like, my favorite thing is that, not sitting in this chair. But um, if, you, if, if you can work with your dog fetching a ball or fetching a stick, it's really great for two reasons. The first reason, it's pretty easy for you. You just sit there, you throw it, you wait, brings your dog brings it back, drops it, you throw it again, repeat. You get to sit there with your beer, with your glass of wine. Your dog's getting exercise, great. The second reason it's so awesome is that most dogs will tell you when they are ready to be done exercising. So you don't have to wonder. A lot of people will make the mistake of leashing up their dog, going on a long run in the hot heat, and the dog is unable to sustain that type of distance, and that uh, heat really negatively affects them, and it's just not good for the dog. But in the case of fetching, and what Callie has done, and a lot of labs and retrievers will do this, once they are finished with fetching the ball or the stick or whatever you're using, they will just not bring it back. They'll go sit down, lay down for a while, and then when they are ready, when they've had some chance, uh, some time to rest and they're ready to fetch again, they'll bring it back to you and you can start that process over again. That's why I'm such an advocate for people to play fetch with their dogs as a form of exercise. Now, it's also important that you just don't play fetch for three minutes and you go, oh, well, that's it. I fetched the ball like that guy on Facebook told me to, and now my dog's getting enough exercise. No, it's not the case. Your dog needs more exercise than you probably imagine. So really spend some time working with your dog, allowing them to rest, allowing them to come back and play more so that they are getting a lot of exercise. They love exercise. A tired dog is a happy dog. Um, now, for uh, most people have a warped perception of how much exercise their dog is actually getting. I'm going to share a story with you. One time, a client um, had a two retrievers living in her backyard. Not full-time, but when she left, she would put them in their backyard, her backyard. And I said, your dog needs to get more... Um, your dogs need to get more exercise. And she says, oh, they get plenty of exercise. They run around the backyard so much that there's actually a track that you can see where they've worn down the grass and they're running around so much. And she thought that was great. And what I had to, had to explain to her is that it's in fact because your dogs are not getting enough exercise that they are having to run around your backyard so much and in the same pattern, which is not good, 
that you are losing grass and you're forming this dirt track around the perimeter of your yard. A dog who would be getting enough exercise would not need to spend the time in the backyard running around. Rather, they could chill out under the tree or, you know, chase a squirrel or do something instead of just having so much exercise that they're running over and over and over again in a circle. So don't think that when you see your dog exercising, you're thinking, oh great, now they're getting their exercise, I'm done. That exercise might actually be a symptom of them not getting enough exercise in the first place. I hope that concept makes sense and you start to view exercise in a more logical uh, way from after hearing that. Now, um, exercise is not always enough for an animal to see a decrease in problem behaviors. It often is, is all a dog needs. But especially with retrievers and labs, who I consider to be maybe more intelligent than some of the other breeds of dogs out there. I don't like to be a breedist here, uh, but I, I like to think that they're a little more intelligent than some of the other dogs. They need that mental stimulation as well. It's just like when we were kids going to school, we had that recess period and we also had PE. And we have that on purpose because if you keep a kid in a classroom the entire time and you don't allow them to exercise, they go crazy. Well, similarly, if all we did was exercise, but we never focused our brain, we would still go crazy. So we have to make sure that we're looking at our dog's health holistically, not just, okay, I took my dog for a run or I played fetch with my dog. I've done my responsibility as a dog owner, I'm out. Instead, we want to uh, look at this holistic approach and make sure that we're not only exercising the body, but we're also exercising the mind. Now, training is the best way to do this with positive reinforcement training, but here's where people get hung up. They either think, I, my dog doesn't need to learn anything because it doesn't bark, it doesn't jump, it walks great on a leash, so there's no reason for me to train it. Or two, they think, oh, this, I, I, mean, I don't know how to train. Well, let me dispel both of those myths right now for you and show you how you can actually help your dog work and exercise his or her brain. The first uh, concept that your, your, your dog doesn't need to learn anything so you shouldn't teach them anything is silly. I teach Callie dumb stuff all the time. Um, I'll teach her to get a beer from the refrigerator. I'll teach her how to shake her head yes or uh, no or yes. I'll teach her to wave. I'll teach her to spin in a circle. Not because I need her to do any of these things, but I do it because it allows us to bond together through that training process, and it also gives her an opportunity to use those critical thinking skills. It allows her to go, all right, what is dad trying to get me to do here? How can I decipher what it is that he wants? And really causes her to not just run and fetch a ball and bring it back, run and fetch a ball and bring it back, run and fetch a ball and bring it back in that monotonous thought process, but rather stop and think, all right, how do I do this? And when your dog starts to exercise their mind that way, beautiful things happen. Not only should you see a decrease in problem behaviors, but you're also at the same time building up and creating a beautiful relationship with your dog. If your dog sucks, it's because your relationship with your dog sucks. And if your dog is awesome, it's because your relationship with your dog is awesome. And the best way for you to know if you have a sucky relationship or a great relationship is ask some of the friends who you really trust and go, what do you think about my dog? And if they go, oh my gosh, I love her. She's so great. Good relationship. They're like, oh no, she's really nice. Like, she jumps a lot and she barks and um, like she's kind of crazy, but I like her. Your relationship sucks. All right. So uh, I went off on a little tangent. The second part is that, well, I don't know how to train. It's really easy, guys. If you go to the Tullystraining.com website, you'll see lots of different things you can do with your dog to start uh, helping them through those problem behaviors like uh, jumping, barking pulling on a leash, potty training, um, all of those things. And it's a really great jump start to kind of learn the fundamentals of training and again, develop that amazing relationship with your dog. And it's all free. So go to Tullystraining.com, T-U-L-L-Y-S training.com and get that information so you can start uh, working with your dog. The next question people ask is usually, well, how often do I have to work with my dog for training? The more the better, but... A shorter session is better than a longer session, or rather lots of short sessions are better than a longer session. Just like if I was going to learn calculus, 
I, I wouldn't be able to sit down for three hours and stay focused. I would lose focus after a period of time. So with your dog, the same thing applies. Work with them for three to five minutes in the morning and then work with them for 10 to 15 minutes at night. Um, or if you want to work more than that, great. But keep those short sessions, keep them fun, keep them positive, and that's going to give your dog that mental stimulation that they're looking for. And then if you couple that with the exercise we just talked about, you're going to have a dog that is really on its way to having a better life, and you two are going to be on, a, on your way to having a great relationship. We're going to come back uh, later this week with more tips and tricks for your labs and retrievers. I think this topic for labs and retrievers is so important because they truly are um, a breed that needs both. All dogs need it, but their need comes at a bigger, higher level. So make sure you go and uh, subscribe to this uh, live stream broadcast, like our Facebook page, and Mary will be back on Friday to give you more information about how to have these great relationships with labs and retrievers and also some cool facts about this awesome breed. All right, before we say goodbye, we have to get Callie up here to say bye one more time. All right, Callie, up here. Come on. There she is. Sit. I know, you didn't want to be on camera. You just wanted to play. But there's Callie. Give me a high five, girl. Thank you. Mwah. All right, guys, we'll see you later. Bye.